जय
हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु अरे कृष्णा सर कम एवरी बड़ी हरे कृष्णा प्रभु हेलो हेलो सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी Prabhuji, I think you are on mute. Uh, let me call Prabhuji one second. Sure. Can we? Yes, yes, we yes, can. Sir. Yeah, we were not able to hear. You went okay. blank for a long time. Long time. Okay. So, did anybody hear my question? Anybody no. want to no. recap on what we discussed last week? Okay, and that was the silence. And after that, I went into answering that. uh basically we discuss first and second verses of chapter 2 uh the first uh, verse talked about talks about real compassion um uh, actually compassion real compassion is that which is shown towards the soul and typically we are used to showing compassion to the material body uh for example you know we give the example of a person who begging on the street uh we give we show compassion to his body and give him money or something to eat etc but real compassion is to actually give him something which will help his eternal journey as a soul uh, that is real compassion um propat gives the example of uh, you know giving showing compassion uh, showing compassion to uh, a drowning man right if a person is drowning then we don't show there's no point in showing compassion to the uh, to the body right we have to show compassion to uh to the soul um to the dress uh, i mean if you, if you show compassion to the dress of that person it's of no use we have to show compassion to the person so similarly uh, in in uh, in general dealings also while we might show compassion to um the body which is just very temporary we should actually try and show compassion towards the soul so for which we have to know atma gnana we have to know knowledge of the soul that is the first verse and the second verse very importantly we went into uh you know clear understanding of who krishna is because sanjaya introduces krishna as sri bhagavan uvacha right and we discussed bhagavan is uh, one who has six opulences aishwarya sya samagrasya virya sya yashasha shriya dana vairagya yoschaiva shannam bhagavati gana so one who has all these six uh, uh, opulences is bhagavan uh, and so somebody might say i have uh, i have riches i have knowledge i have uh beauty but uh, one cannot have uh, you know everything in fullness 
right and that is the supreme lord the supreme lord krishna is one who has all of this in fullness right so which means he is he has all the opulences but he is also fully renounced right this we don't see in the material world somebody who has opulences is attached to his opulence um, but uh, krishna has all the opulences and he is also fully renounced you can just you know just drop everything like a you know very instantly right so this is bhagavan so he is introducing saying that you know there are many ishwara so brahma we talked about this also brahma in brahma samhita uh, he introduces krishna as ishwara parama krishna sachidananda vigra anadi radhe govinda sarva karana karanam so he is saying ishwara parama so there are many ishwaras ishwara means controller right so we are also controllers we are trying to control maybe a small house or ourselves or maybe some little something that we are doing at work etc we are trying to be controllers right but parama ishwara parama ishwara is krishna which means controller of all, all controllers is krishna right so he brahma says because he is the engineer he is the first uh, you know jeeva in this uh, material universe so he says ishwara parama krishna his name is krishna right so like this we should understand krishna's position actually prabhupada says in the introduction to bhagavad gita saying that even if we don't know or be, believe we don't fully understand how krishna is the supreme lord we should at least believe that krishna is the supreme lord because the whole of bhagavad gita is his uh, teaching right and he is not considered or accepted as uh, uh, supreme lord then uh, then this knowledge becomes just like any other mundane knowledge i mean so many people go and write so many books if you go on the internet and look for you know i mean knowledge any kind of knowledge there are tons of tons of content right i mean everybody writes everybody has content to offer right but then what will be the difference between all that content that is out there on the internet and the content which is given by the supreme lord himself there has to be a distinction right isn't it i mean a 10th standard person writing about physics versus uh, somebody who's done a phd writing about physics there should be a difference right so we should understand krishna's position being the supreme lord being the origin of all knowledge and then we can actually understand bhagavad gita because otherwise we will start um you know our normal nature is to question everything that we hear which is a very good characteristic which is also required in spiritual knowledge uh, but the difference is when somebody very uh, knowledgeable is speaking we should know our position saying that i don't really understand this so you know let me take a submissive position and try and understand from that person right and not a challenging position so this is the difference when we accept krishna as a supreme lord then we don't take a challenging position we take a submissive position knowing that we are very small minute and he is supreme and you know trying to understand what he actually says he saying in bhagavad gita right and the supreme lord is can be uh, understood realized in three ways can be understood in three ways um, in three phases uh, it is brahman paramatma and bhagavan uh, so brahman is the effulgence uh, that is coming from the body of the lord uh then there is uh, then there is uh, okay brahman then there is uh, parmatma uh, parmatma is the you know expansion of the supreme lord he is present as uh, parmatma in all our hearts uh, and then there is bhagwan bhagwan is a supreme person himself and he lives in the in his own abode in the spiritual world so Uh, when we talk about god god is in a very incom- english word which is not very complete it doesn't give a very complete sense of who krishna is so that is why prabhupada coined the word supreme personality of god bhagwan right so this bhagwan is the one who is now speaking right he is the supreme person supremely powerful supremely knowledgeable supremely beautiful supremely merciful everything supreme about krishna this is the beauty of relay so what we are trying to do uh, is you know in process of bhakti um, is to actually uh, build a relationship with this supreme the beautiful sweet person krishna um, all of us want relationships but we will never get a relationship that is that can come any near to what we can you know if we can develop one with krishna so this is the beauty of uh, krishna consciousness right and so brahman paramatma bhagavan um, so we are we are interested in bhagavan we are not interested in uh, parmatma or uh, brahman because they are just a partial 
uh, revelation of the supreme person we want the full revelation of the supreme person and that is his uh, you know his personality himself and the supreme lord lives in his spiritual world in spiritual world generally we call it vaikuntha um krishna has a special specific place that he stays in in vaikuntha which is called goloka it's called goloka vrindavana okay goloka means go means cows loka means place right or so this place is full of cows so that is what krishna does all, all all the time right he doesn't have any other work to do um once you know one uh, somebody from a western country had come to india uh, searching for supreme lord so you saying okay uh, let me understand because the western philosophy doesn't give a very clear understand so he came to india went to so many temples and when he went to each and every temple he saw that you know he was he went he went to so many temples finally he came to the temple of krishna and for some reason he concluded saying that this is the supreme lord then somebody was asking saying that why are you saying that this is the supreme person he says he look at all the other other uh, um, gods that are there in the different temples they are having some weapon or the other in their hand because they are trying to do something so if you have some weapon that means that you have some action to do you have some responsibility to take um, right but when i went to krishna's temple krishna was just playing a flute he didn't have any uh, weapon as such right so which means that uh, he is like a ceo right a ceo doesn't have to come and sit in the factory and do work right he just gets work done uh, uh, so similarly krishna is a supreme person he has nothing to do but to just enjoy with his uh, devotees in Uh, his place called goloka vrindavana which is part of the spiritual sky uh, we will talk about the spiritual sky uh, some other time uh, when the right uh, opportunity comes so that is krishna that is bhagavan and now this bhagavan uh, who is the all knowing supreme person is now starting his um, uh, you know his instruction in bhagavad gita so we're going to start with verse 3 um, and continue from verse 3 someone chant verse 3 ಫಾರ್ and it is degrading it is pulling him down right so we always have to look at potency which is going to take us up right but this is degrading it does not become you saying krishna is saying it does not become you this is not good for you right uh, this is not expected from you right give up such petty weakness of heart and arise petty weakness of heart so the whole situation in bhagavad gita that arjuna was put into is petty weakness uh krishna is not actually uh, kind of uh, you know he is not accepting um, arjuna's position he is saying this is petty which means that this is very trivial and you are simply for uh, no real reason uh, you become very weak in your heart and you are not willing to do your duty so he is saying give up this petty weakness of heart and arise and this is a kind of call to action to everybody um of course i mean all of us are active in this material world but actually the real action has to be on the platform of dharma so this is also a call to all of us to say give up petty weakness of heart what is our petty weakness of heart our petty weakness is we are attached to material things too much attached to material things krishna is saying give up give up this petty weakness and arise and do your duty which is dharma right dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat prinitam so this dharma is given by the supreme lord and it is our duty it is actually our real duty as human beings to actually perform dharma right so as so we should understand as krishna is speaking to arjuna he is speaking to us because we have to put ourselves in arjuna's position right so because of petty weakness petty uh, you know this uh, trivial uh, you know attachments that we have in this material world we have technically given up given up our real duty real dharma which is to serve krishna right so krishna is wake up call get up arise now arjuna is still in the mood of friendship right arjuna has still not started to accept krishna's instruction so immediately he is interject- interjecting with his uh, you know his view he is saying arjuna vacha katham bhishma maham sankhe dronam cha madhusudana ishubi prati yotsami puja ragari sudana so as soon as krishna said get up arise fight 
uh, krishna is uh, arjuna is uh, refuting he is saying oh killer of enemies oh killer of madhu uh, he is calling krishna as killer of madhu which, because madhu was one demon and krishna killed that demon called madhu he is saying okay you killed a demon called madhu but how can i counter attack uh, you know people like bhishma and drona who are worthy of my worship madhu was not worthy of your worship right he was he was a demon he had to be killed right but what about you know my teachers my guru is like bhishma and drona they are you know very uh, worshipable persons and how can i just kill them right did you kill your own guru did you kill your own relatives no of course he killed kamsa uh, right but kamsa was a demon uh, though a devotee though though a relative right but here uh, arjuna's question is more in terms of you know bhishma and drona are all respectable people why why do we have to kill them why are you pushing me to do this right while you are saying you know i have some petty weakness of heart and i should arise uh, you know arjuna is still not able to understand krishna what krishna is saying so arjuna goes on he still continues his argument he says guru unhatva hi mahanubhavan sheyo bhoktum vaiksham api haloke atvartha kamam stu guru nihaiva bunjiya bhogan rutira pratiktan he saying it would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of lives of great souls see this is actually magnanimity of a kshatriya actually kshatriyas uh, you know in their blood there is fighting so there is this example given uh, for brahmana every all of these you know what we call brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra these are this is not a caste system as we have misunder come to misunderstand in uh, kali yuga actually uh, it is based on guna and karma it is based on guna which is your nature and the type of work that you do karma so brahmanas are generally very forgiving right and Uh, they are uh, they uh, always do their duty irrespective of what conditions they are put into uh, so once there is one brahmana who is you know standing in uh, water and gen- generally brahmanas you know they offer take the uh, bla- water and offer oblations to the uh, river wherever they are taking bath so this brahmana was you know taking water from the river and then um, you know doing his oblations and suddenly he sees one scorpion and he lifts the scorpion in his hand and the scorpion bites him and then he again you know leaves it in the water because of the pain but again he lifts the water and again comes up the scorpion again the scorpion bites and this goes on and there's an onlooker who's seeing is saying are you like crazy i mean why are you doing this? you're lifting it and then it is giving you trouble and then you're dropping it back so then the brahmana says see i am doing my dharma which is to protect that jiva and the jiva is doing its dharma which is to sting so brahmanas are like this and we have seen also the example of uh, dronacharya who accepted drishtadyumna who was actually born to kill dronacharya but when he was sent for uh, you know to be taught uh, the art of warfare by dronacharya dronacharya simply accepted though he knew that tomorrow the same person is going to kill me so the, he didn't have any concern saying that oh how can i teach somebody who is going to kill me this is brahmanas right like this similarly kshatriyas in bhagavatam there is the example of dhruva uh, dhruva maharaj was like you know f- very small boy you know four or five year old boy and when his mother said that you can't sit on your father's lap because he had a stepmother and the stepmother did not want him to sit on his father's lap and he became so angry at that age that he goes and he goes to the forest to look for uh, you know vishnu because he, he has heard that you know by by doing austerity performing austerities to please vishnu he can achieve anything and he wants to achieve now a kingdom greater than uh, his father and his grandfather itself right great grandfather so uh, like this you know th- uh, each of each of this uh, uh, brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra vaishyas for example we know right so many people who are so naturally businessmen right uh, you give them any anything any situation they'll figure out how to make money right and this is vaishya this is a nature of making making money right which is why sometimes actually generally south indians are considered brahmanas historically right like uh, and like if you go to gujarat and you know bombay and these places are more um, vaishyas uh, right so typically you know when brahmanas try to do business they struggle because they don't have that vaishya mentality and this is nature of course some people might develop some other characteristics over a period of time so that's all okay right but generally this is nature naturally you know see how many marwadis gujaratis they are naturally businessmen compared to number of you know say south indians south indians are are mostly brain they they want to give brain power right accountant 
or software engineer you used our we become you used our brain to become like robots anyway that's a different discussion um so here uh, he is saying you know how can i um, i i am uh, i am a kshatriya i need to fight but this situation is forcing me to become a beggar uh, i can't do this right so he is so magnanimous though his nature is so strong he is giving it up saying you know the situation warrants me to give up my nature i will give up my nature and he's saying even though they are desiring worldly gain they are superiors uh, we'll talk about a very important thing about superiors in the next uh, actually yeah in this verse on the previous verse i forgot to mention actually prabhupad says in the purport saying that you know it is general etiquette that superiors are not to be offered even a verbal fight superiors are not to be offered even a verbal fight you know this was how much uh, people were respectful about their superiors right but nowadays uh, i think this respect is slowly dwindling mm-hmm. i know more than my parents kind of thought process uh, youngsters even more right our generation we might ourselves uh, we might ourselves demonstrate this at times mm-hmm. and our children are possibly you know uh, taking the lead here um so superiors are to be respected and superiors both in terms of elders in the family as well as superiors at work anybody whom we take guidance from they have to be respected right and here arjuna is saying that kill everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood so he doesn't want to kill his uh, superiors um but of course you know there is one consideration to be made uh, though they were gurus they were teachers drona bhishma they had taken up the wrong side then taken up the side of adharma duryodhana right and scriptures say that you know if a guru he uh, does something abominable not acceptable then he has to be rejected so actually this was a, a, a situation for um, you know arjuna to actually re- reject his gurus technically and uh, stick on the path of dharma because his gurus had gone on to the other side on the side of adharma um, but he was very considerate uh, you know compassionate person which is why you know this chapter starts with his compassion and that is so he was showing the wrong compassion he was showing compassion on the material platform and not on the spiritual platform verse 6 na chaitat vidmak kataram no gariyo yadva jaye ma yadi vano jaye yu yane vahatvana jiji visham aste vastita pramukhe datar astraha now he is now he is done enough of logic and argument now he is becoming tired now he is coming to his you know real position he is unsure so he is saying now i don't know what is better i don't know whether conquering them or being conquered them or conquered conquered by them what is better uh, right uh, and he is saying if we kill the sons of dhritarashtra should we even care to live i mean there are our cousins uh, what kind of a you know principle is this that we kill our own uh, relatives right so he becomes very uh, despondent but he is not clear he is now confused yeah, till now he was trying to you know put some logic draw some logic from here there from shastra and you know throwing it at krishna but finally he is like i don't know i mean uh, while i am saying all this i am unclear and this is intelligence right see arjuna's intelligence was that he understood that he didn't have sufficient intelligence uh, his intelligence was that he understood he didn't have sufficient intelligence to Uh, solve this problem right so he approached the most intelligent person mm-hmm. so this is intelligence um, not that we become arrogant for you know with false ego saying that i know everything i'll figure out everything i don't need anybody's help uh, many times you know when we go to distribute bhagavad gita uh, you know on the street uh, people say ha i basically here in kannada karnataka they say ha nangottu nanatra ide they say i know i have i have bhagavad gita i know everything uh, please don't waste my time indirectly Uh, uh, because people think they know everything of course there have been also a lot of cheaters in kaliyuga right in the name of religion spirituality people have been cheated so they are concerned they don't want to talk to sadhus say okay the sadhus uh, maybe they are out there to extract some money out of me so forget it right we are we are seen as salesmen <laughs> you know so it's a fallen state um yeah so arjuna is confused totally confused right and in this proper makes one beautiful statement in the purport he says unless the senses are controlled there is no chance of elevation to the platform of knowledge so this is a very important statement 
unless the senses are controlled we cannot elevate ourselves to the platform of knowledge what this means see if we if our senses are not controlled we are always in mode of passion we are in rajoguna we are not in control you know we are just jumping up and down no time uh, no time for anything no time to sit and think uh, just action 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 uh, what act, what is the reason for the action what is the goal of action no idea uh, but action action right now when we are so busy we all would have experienced this right do we get a chance to even think about what am i doing why am i doing what should i be doing we don't have we don't have time we don't have time for that so when we don't have time for that why would we come to ask any question get try to get any knowledge we just want to go with the flow like people say just go with the flow which means that you know if you are living like an animal just continue to live like an animal it's okay but this is not intelligence right so here propa is saying that so for us to come to the platform of knowledge our senses have to be controlled right and without coming to the platform of knowledge we can't understand devotion what is devotion so unless we have we understand knowledge about krishna about our relationship with krishna etc how can we do any devotion how can we understand what is the goal of our life right so please consider this very important point especially people in software who have absolutely no time to do anything meaningful uh, you know whether you're an engineer or anything else of course doctors are also worse nowadays um, right so everybody pretty much unless uh, you know there are very few occupations where you have kind of control over how much time you want to spend at work because you know work is not everything work is just a part of our duty uh, but of course you know a lot of mis propaganda has happened right work is worship so we'll come to that verse karman nevadi karaste using which people said work is worship but they didn't read the second line of the verse unfortunately for india oh by the way i heard this um, before independence india was a place of spiritual culture before uh, the british came india was a space a place of spiritual culture temples uh, people going doing you know satvik work etc etc of course then britishers came and they gave their beautiful western you know influence of british influence and we wholeheartedly accepted it and by the time it was by by you know when it was time for britishers to go and it was time for us to get our independence then our own leaders they said um you know specifically jawahar lal nehru said that um, our india is in this position because of too much of devotion too much of bhakti too much of spiritual culture so our temples are now going to be industries industries are now going to be our new temples right and we can see how his words have come to play right i mean literally industries are our new temples uh, temples are empty um, you know thanks to corona at least some awakening has happened in some quarters but otherwise it's all about materialism it's all about production it's all about goods consumption advertisements and this is all that is right but uh, this is this kind of life will not come allow us to come to any platform of knowledge right it's just running behind one material uh, position to another right and there is no real meaning to this kind of living So unless the senses are controlled, there is no chance of elevation to the platform of knowledge. So far, says right. So senses have to be controlled. And today, unfortunate situation is that our senses are out of control. They are like a very misbehaved child, right? How a misbehaved child acts. Like whatever he wants, he should get, right? And that is what we are. Actually, many times, you know, it's so funny. Parents tell their children, saying that why are you acting like this? And then don't uh, they they don't really you know take a moment to think about their own life and uh, you know what values they are living by and what they are trying to achieve in their life we, uh, you know and because most of parents we think that you know we know we know uh, whatever we need to do we know right and we are here to advise our children so let's advise our children but intelligent children you know question parents about what they are doing and then we are in a fix we don't know we don't have answers right uh, so it is very important that we actually take a you know sit, sit back and think about it right uh, take a break from work 
and start asking saying that you know what is this is this what i am i am living for so now he con- comes to the conclusion of his mental state he says karpanya dosho pata swabhava prachami tvam dharma samoda cheta ye shreyasya nishchitam bruhitan me shishyaste ham shadi mam tvam prapannam we now accepts he gives up all his logic and he says now i am confused I'm confused about my duty and i have lost all composure i have lost all composure now i cannot think because i have lost composure when we have lost composure we can't no logic will uh, no place for logic and why he is saying because of miserly weakness the propa talks about miserly weakness in the purport very beautiful he's saying in this condition i am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me so is surrendering so it says now i am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you please instruct me this is one of the most important you know beginning verses of bhagavad gita there are so many concepts to understand so first you know there is discussion about miserly weakness what is this miserly weakness actually propat calls this skin disease skin disease what is skin disease skin disease means actually it's all just connected to the skin which means that me my family uh, my children my family my parents my relatives my society then we'll take it further up and say my state my country this is called this is called skin disease why skin disease because somebody in karnataka fights against somebody in tamil nadu why because this is not related to my skin my skin is related to karnataka tamil nadu is not related to my skin so let me fight india fights against pakistan somebody else fights again you know america fights against our you know so many things right because we don't we look at everybody as connect, those who are connected to our skin we accept them at some level right and it is also um uh, subjective to our considerations right we might consider somebody as our uh, as related to us and somebody else not related to us and it's the whole life is all about this right uh, be away from people who you don't like and uh, uh, you know build up relations with people whom you like right live whole all your life for this body uh, that is the center of all selfishness which is me my body and then extended selfishness goes into my children my spouse then slowly it extends further the circle of influence extends further then it goes into uh, my relatives etc right and anything uh, you know like i see a practical example in front of my house right there are um, you know in vijayanagar here sandal out actually there are a lot of dogs on the street okay and these dogs inevitably every night they are barking away to glory right and why do they bark when you look at the street any other dog from any other area comes in they bark any new vehicle that comes in which they know doesn't belong to this area they bark they are protecting their own territory right now they bark and they disturbed our disturb our sleep okay we also bark but in a different language right but this is all that is happening right defense acquire things for myself acquire things for my family defend whatever you acquire this is all the goal of life and acquire more and more there are industries out there companies out there to produce more and more every day because that is their job and this is consumerism right and we are out here uh, people who are you know crazy behind uh, apple products um you know okay when is the next upgrade i just bought an iphone you know, i didn't buy but i'm just saying somebody bought an iphone 12 paying uh, more than a lakh of a rupee yes, and then they are waiting oh this is outdated what next what what else will iphone apple now come up with? what um, great technology it's going to introduce right waiting to spend that hard earned money right in a gfi so this is skin disease we are too attached to our family too attached to things that we like um, and this is miserly weakness right and i give this example saying that whatever we are too attached to results causes becomes a cause of misery 
So anything we are too attached to. If you are too attached to wealth, and if you lose wealth, then we get uh, we are in um, misery. Arjuna here because he was too attached to his relatives. He is in misery. He is struggling, saying, "Okay, what should I do? Is should I kill them? Should I not kill them? Even to the extent of giving up his own duty." So this is miserly weakness, right? So all of us are attached to material things, and these material things inevitably give us suffering. right and those that are considered favorable to these material relationships are accepted those that are not favorable are rejected and like i said you know it's just a culture of procuring new things protecting whatever is there so this is miserly weakness so arjuna is saying due to this miserly weakness i have lost all composure now i am not able to really understand what is my duty what is the goal of life what i should do i don't understand any of this right and like i said you know we are all in arjuna's position then he is saying in this condition i am asking you to tell for certain now this is the beauty of arjuna's uh, position right arjuna had krishna who is the supreme knower the source of all knowledge right in front of him right and he completely surrendered to me saying i you please tell me now in this sanskrit uh, words there is a word called shreyas right so there are two words shreyas and prayas shreyas means ultimate good Prayas means temporary good, right? Like child wanting to eat chocolate to become happy is prayas, and not parents not wanting him to eat chocolate is prayas, because they know as he grows older he is going to have trouble with his teeth. So Arjuna is asking Krishna, please tell me for certain, meaning don't give me any options, because I'm again going to use my logic, right? so you please tell me for certain that this is the path and i'm going to just follow it i am not going to use my logic again right but he says what is best for me you please tell me what is best for me what is the long what will give me long term benefit not just today's situation right i just don't want to think about today only i want to think about tomorrow but i've lost all composure so i'm not able to understand i'm not able to decide you please tell me what is best for me it so this is a very important characteristic that one should have right it is about seeking higher authorities not just seeking for knowledge arjuna was not just seeking for knowledge arjuna was seeking higher authority see knowledge should always come from authorities we have discussed this many times there are tons of knowledge out there right i can write my own knowledge gyan like as we say in corporate world gyan isne gyan diya right this guy is giving me gyan gyan Uh, everybody wants to give their own gyan now there is no value for you know uh, i might give you some gyan somebody else might give you some some other gyan there is no real value for this gyan the real gyan is some when it comes from a superior authority superior authority like for example you go to a college and you study some textbooks because you know that this person is an authority in this field right so similarly even um, to uh, answer questions like who am i why am i here what is the goal of life right what should what is my duty what is real dharma all these we have to go to superior authority and superior authority is none other than krishna right so here he is saying you tell me for certain what is best for me krishna because you are the supreme authority right now he comes to his real uh, you know crux of his problem he says now i am your disciple okay in 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 uh, sanskrit kannada various languages this word shishya is there shishya Uh, the shishya has a root called shish shash dhat right so which means actually discipline so if we are a disciple whether we are in school college or whether we are learning some music if you are learning anything from anybody we should have discipline okay and this discipline is the cornerstone of progress okay so discipline means if you have to be uh, for a class at Uh, say six o'clock. You have to be there at six o'clock sharp. Actually, you should be there maybe two minutes earlier. This is discipline, saying I have to be on time, right? So things like this, you know, discipline. If you don't, if you are not disciplined, then we become lax. Ah, ठीक है, चलता है. You know, one day, few minutes late, or if I don't go one day, it's okay. This is lack of discipline. So uh, disciple means discipline. Guru gives discipline to the disciple, and disciple has to learn that discipline and. follow those instructions so arjuna is saying i am now becoming your disciple that means you discipline me because i have lost it completely mm? 
and he's saying most important word here i am a soul surrendered unto you in this kaliyuga actually when we use this word surrender people are afraid we don't want to surrender to anybody we want to be masters isn't it we want others to surrender to us what is the question of surrendering what does surrender mean i have independence i can do whatever i want what are you talking about surrender what does surrender mean i'm going to lose all my independence you have to just listen to what somebody else says actually shastra says this surrender to the superior authority is actually real freedom freedom means that we have to surrender to a superior authority why freedom for example uh, say there's a there's somebody who uh, was part of the indian army right now he surrendered to the superior superior authority right like who is maybe the uh, whoever is the general or the prime minister or president who it is right who is taking decisions on okay go and fight with uh, this country now because he is under superior authority he has the he is free because even though he is going to kill somebody because he is killing somebody on the battlefield there is no problem there is no punishment for that because he surrendered to the supreme authority right but the same person if he comes out and takes up his rifle and then just kills a civilian then he is gone right because he is trying to take power in his hand he will get into trouble right so we have to surrender to a superior authority because in some sense you know also that our headache kind of passes on to the superior authority it's very simple right uh, superior authority is now responsible for our actions so he has to he or she has to say what is right what is wrong right so this surrender without surrender we can't get knowledge and we have done this for example somebody is learning some music you surrender to your guru and you want you accept saying that okay my guru is knows stuff that is why i am learning from him you go to a college you surrender if you maybe people don't surrender to uh, lecturers professors but you surrender to the textbooks whatever has been prescribed and we study that and then you know go and write the exam we go to office corporates we surrender to our boss no choice there's no other option hmm? offshore corporate people there's no other option right because everything is in my boss's hands surrender says come at the 6 o'clock we come at 6 o'clock the stay till 9 o'clock we stay till 9 o'clock we have surrendered but still we have we feel that we have some sense of freedom that i am independent actually nobody is independent isn't it at home if you are married then you know husband is dependent on the wife wife is dependent on the husband children are dependent on parents right but there is no real independence as such but we are in this illusion saying we are independent so here arjuna is saying i am surrendering to you now all my logic is over i am done tested we succeed prabhupada writes in the purport saying that everybody in this material world we are always in you know perplexities perplexities we are going from one challenge to another one perplexity to another right and he says it behooves behooves means mandatory it is mandatory for all of us to accept a guru a spiritual master not an ordinary guru a guru who can give us spiritual knowledge who can help us understand life around us who can help us you know bring sense to our life give a final goal to our life who can help us maneuver through all the difficulties being clear in terms of where we are headed and of course um, you know in the in the interim also help us deal with our problems in a you know from view point of shastra right so it is very important that all of us have a guru a spiritual guru right and uh, arjuna was so fortunate uh, that he had krishna right in front of him right so he didn't have to go searching for him. right and of course we are also very fortunate because we have shila prabhupad who is all of our shiksha guru is giving us knowledge of shastra right and if we surrender to shila prabhupad to start with here you know this uh, read his books here his lectures then our path is perfect there is you know we are on the right path right and this surrender is required because otherwise we will live without meaning right we will live a life of animals and that's not very laudable right it's not very appreciated 
because human life is a life of responsibility animal life is a life of irresponsibility right if humans also remain irresponsible then they will become no non different animals hmm so this is where first proper also writes one another important statement in this purport lot of people think that they know bhagavad gita uh, but actually they don't know bhagavad gita because they don't accept krishna as a supreme lord and one of our uh, you know uh, dr radha krishnan he was known for he was a great philosopher he was known for his philosophy and he couldn't completely get the understanding of bhagavad gita because he thought that krishna was an ordinary person right and he said that when krishna is saying man mana bhav mat pakto or when krishna is saying sarvatam sarva dharma an paritya cha mam ekam janam raja um, dr radha krishna said he please surrender to the soul within krishna don't surrender to krishna because he thought krishna is an ordinary person his soul and his body are different but everything about krishna is spiritual krishna doesn't have anything to do with this material world he doesn't have a body like us his body is also spiritual his soul is spiritual everything about him is spiritual mm-hmm. right so which is why we have to understand bhagavad gita from supreme authority from a book of knowledge which has come when a book which has come in disciplic succession in parampara that is why we are reading from bhagavad gita as it is because it is it is as it is come through the parampara so arjuna has finally come to his position of surrender which is his which was his real position all along he was trying to you know give some logic and trying to substantiate his position but finally he understood that he was all entangled he was completely unclear in terms of what what he has to be who he should be doing and he surrenders to krishna now that he surrenders to krishna of course then he also says next verse i'll, I'll finish this also नहि प्रपश्यामि ममापनुद्या देच्चोकम उच्चोषणम इंद्रियाणाम अवाप्य भूमौ असपत्नम रुद्धम राज्यम सुराणाम अति चारिपत्यम ही सेस आई फाइंड नो मींस टू ड्राइव अवे माय ग्रीफ व्हिच इज ड्राइंग अप माय सेंसेस आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू डिस्पेल इट इवन इफ आई विन अ प्रॉस्परस अनराइवल्ड किंगडम ऑन अर्थ विद सोवरेनिटी लाइक टेमी गॉड सो बेसिकली सेइंग इवन इफ आई विन एवरीथिंग इफ आई हैव ऑल द वेल्थ इन दिस वर्ल्ड ऑल द नॉलेज इन द वर्ल्ड ऑल द एवरीथिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड दैट्स नॉट गोइंग टू हेल्प मी ड्राइव माय ग्रीफ राइट and uh, propa says that any amount of academic knowledge scholarship high position etc are all useless in solving the real problems of life and i i will end with saying what are the real problems of life the uh, real problems of life are those which nobody wants but nobody can avoid real problems please make a note of this uh, is something which nobody wants but nobody can avoid right and shastra classifies janma mrityu jara vyadhi birth death old age and disease as real problems right uh, all others are not considered real problems because they are temporary or they are uh, there you know one person might experience another person might not etc right so it's not real as such right but these are real problems and any amount of academic knowledge scholarship money position etc they cannot help us solve these real problems for us to be able to solve these real problems we have to go to a bona fide uh, authorized authentic spiritual master who is 100% krishna conscious right and this spiritual master could have come from any background he might have, he might he can be born in any land he can be speaking any language he can be from any so called caste so called color creed etc etc as long as he knows the knowledge the uh, science of krishna consciousness he should be accepted as a guru right this is um and the real so please remember these are the real problems i'll continue this uh, next week in terms of discussing why these are real problems and why these are even considered problems you know you might be thinking okay birth why is it a problem It's such a happy occasion when some somebody takes birth right so we'll understand this and then proceed on to uh, very soon krishna is going to start his actual instruction okay we will stop here uh, as uh, discussed last week everybody please do your chanting so this you know devotion to krishna uh, which is the goal of bhagavad gita is is done in say, four simple steps a for association <coughs> associate with devotees as much as possible b for books please read bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam 
see for chanting please chant the hari krishna maha mantra every day like we said you know at least start with two rounds minimum two rounds which takes 10 minutes i hope all of you have started um then this diet please take only krishna prasadam and by this we become purified and we will be in uh, you know on our path to uh, understand the goal of life and then make our life perfect okay. so with those words i stop uh, this discussion if anybody has any questions okay.